Hey y'all, Jim from Partner Engineering at Unstoppable Domains, and today I'm going to be walking you through an introduction to integrating login with Unstoppable. I'm going to cover a very basic hello world, should only take a few minutes, and at the end I'll touch on a few common errors we see people running into during the integration. So today we're going to be building a very basic application that just shows you how you can integrate login with Unstoppable using our pop-up integration method uh, and show you how you can request a set of scopes from the user and then how to handle those scopes in your application. Uh, in particular, looking at my domain as an example, the scopes we're going to be requesting from the user is their domain name, their wallet address, specifically their Ethereum address, and then also the email address they have associated with it. That, of course, is something that is an optional field, and uh, there's various situations where you might want to request that from the user. So first things first, getting started, uh, we want to set up a new login client. So we'll open up the client management page, connect our wallet, and we'll create a new client. This is a very important part. Uh, configuring these redirect URIs uh, exactly correct is uh, a frequent cause of issues. So we're going to be developing on localhost today. Uh, one thing in particular I'd like to call out is these URIs do need to match specifically to what's going to be set in the application. So today I'm going to be working on a port and what I'm going to do is make sure I add that in to the redirect here because that's that'll cause some issues if they don't have an exact match. So I'm going to add port 5001 I'm just going to delete this one for now. Uh, just a couple other things we're going to do. We're going to give this a name, so we'll call it uh, Login with Unstoppable Tutorial. I don't have to change anything else. And then one other thing I'm going to do for now is just remove some of these scopes. Uh, let's just start off with the wallet address. What I'll do is I'll save. And then here I have my configuration data, which is what we're going to be using in a little bit. So uh, actually building our application. First things first, we're going to initiate the project. Uh, obviously, if you guys have an application already, this part uh, would not be needed. But just to get it started from scratch, uh, I've already created my directory for this project. So I'm going to just initialize our JavaScript project. I'm adding uh, parcel for dev, which is going to help us just be able to make updates live on the fly. And then lastly, I'm going to add the uh, UAuthJS library, which is what it's all using under the hood. Whoops. Cool, so next we're going to make our HTML file. This is going to be what you actually load. Again, we're going to make as bare bones of one as possible right now. Following along from our tutorial online, I'm just going to copy and paste that code in there. Next, we're going to make the application JavaScript that actually runs the login logic. So here I'll make an app.js. First things first, we're going to import the library. And now we're going to create our clients. This is where we're going to use that data that we set up earlier. So going back to the client metadata, we can just copy and paste this right over. One thing that's always worth checking is, are these scopes accurate? So for now, we're only going to be using the wallet scope, so I'll just remove that out. And again, making sure that this redirect URI is exactly what I'm going to be running the server on here in a minute. Right, so now that we have our library instantiated, next thing we're going to do is implement our login and logout functions. 
So first thing we'll do is build the, the login flow. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to call the uh, login with pop-up method and then we're going to receive back an authorization and then I'm just going to have a few console log statements to show you some fields with that. And then of course just doing some error handling. Similarly now we're going to want to implement the logout handler. For this one, I'm just going to use the exact code that's in here. All right, and that's about it. So now we're going to actually go and run this. So we're going to start this up. Again, I'm using port 5001 in my case. Fix my typo. So here I'll open up the uh, console log so we can watch it together in the web browser. So here I'll hit this login button. You see the pop-up coming up. Uh, I'm gonna sign in with this domain. Now importantly, of course, this domain is uh, in the wallet that I'm going to be signing from. Here you can see the scopes that we have set, again, which is really just my domain records at this stage. And we're going to sign. And here you see a success. Now that uh, authorization token that you saw, here are all the values that we've received back from it. And then specifically the domain name and the ETH wallet addresses we discussed. Now let's give you an example of how we might add a scope to this. So let's say we wanted to add email address to our scope. So first thing we'll go back to our client configuration what we'll do is we'll go back down here. We'll add in email as a scope. We'll save the changes. And we go back into our uh, instantiation over here. We'll add an email as a scope. Save it. And now we should be good to go. So now when we log in, here, now you see email addresses popped up as a list of the scopes. So this is what it's requesting from me now. Again, we'll sign the transaction. And if we look down into the ID token, we will be able to see the email address right here under the as the sub. And again, if we just wanted to handle that in the code, it'd be the same just as these other guys. So I'll just create a quick variable email address again authorization ID token that email and again just to log it to the console. Save that. Now we'll log in again. And as you'll see there's my email there's my wallet address there's my domain name. Right, so a few common errors we see. Uh, most of the issues we see coming up during integration really do revolve around this redirect URI. Again, it's important that these uh, values match specifically. There are two types of issues that I've seen pop up personally uh, when configuring this. So kind of going back to how we started, let me just show you what happens if we don't have the port number in here as an example. So I'll change this back just to localhost. I'll add that in. Again, delete this one. I'll save my changes. So again, let's say it's localhost in here. It's localhost in my code. And now let's see what happens when I try to log in. So the flow starts off okay. I'll come in, I'll sign the message. But then when it goes to redirect, it doesn't know where to go because it's redirecting not to the application that's running. That's a common issue that we see. 
Uh, again, a way to fix this is just to double check that all the URLs are matching specifically. So in my case, I'll go back into the dashboard just as we had it before. I'll add in port 5001 on that. Save those changes. I'll also add in port 5001 on here. Saved, and again, as you'll see, now when we log in, it'll all work successfully. Another issue I've seen, and this one's a bit more obscure, let's say instead of using localhost, I wanted to specify my localhost explicitly. So I'll change localhost to 127001. Now, if I leave it just like this, what you'll see happen is this. I'll get an invalid request. Again, this is because these URIs are not matching exactly. So, okay, easy enough. Let me go and change that in here. I will change this to localhost. Nope, I'll change this to 127.001, port 5001 again. Add that, and just for now, I'm gonna delete these other ones. I'll save changes. And again, what I'll do is I'll go to 001, 5001. So now let's log in. And here you see it worked, again, because everything matches. Now what's interesting is, let me kill that for right now, and kill this. Now when you're developing in this mode, by default, when I open up with Yarn, you'll notice that this opens up to localhost instead of 127001. And now watch what happens when we log in. Again, with no configurations change of any type, you sign in and now you get this uh, matrix type of situation happening. So uh, when that happens, again, the solution is that there's some sort of host name or some sort of routing going on that's not quite specific. Again, now if I go to here, just as before, what you'll see is this one will work uh, exactly as it was before. So a few things to watch out for. Again, bottom line is when in doubt, just make sure that all these URIs are exactly matching. The URI in your code, the URI in the browser, and of course the one in the client configuration.